So why would anybody say you need to build a DIY 12 volt solar power system uh, in a grid down situation? I mean, uh, why would that be true? Well, the first reason why you'd want to build something like this is that you gain skill and knowledge uh, when you're putting something like this together that's going to be really uh, extremely valuable in a grid down scenario where you're uh, scavenging for whatever parts you can get. Uh, especially if you plan on bugging out. And of course, there's amazing products out there like EcoFlow. Um, you've got Jackery. What makes these power boxes amazing is that you can use smaller gauge wire to run everything inside them, making them lighter. Uh, you can have greater distance because uh, of your higher voltage between your solar panels uh, and your solar charge controllers, giving you all kinds of options. 48 volts is just more efficient and so much better. There's just no question. So why am I saying you need to have a 12 volt power source and capability in a grid down scenario? So the first reason is you gain some real knowledge and skill that will be just so valuable in a grid down that you can help family and friends uh, keep the essential uh, electronics working uh, for survival. Uh, secondly, why 12 volt? Why 12 volts? Because 12 volt batteries and accessories will be around for years to come. There's typically at this point a battery in almost every car. And accessories found in your garage from uh, modified uh, sine wave uh, inverters to plugs, uh, they're, they're everywhere in people's garages. There's two 100 amp hour lithium 12 volts in here one may go bad but i can still use the one that's in here okay and then for instance if um, my power inverter goes bad right here uh, what i've got and what's really interesting is that i can run this little 300 watt uh, right out of here and it'll give me enough to actually uh, power up even some rigid tools, uh, which would be really valuable to have. Um, and so, so even something as small as this gives you the ability to plug in, even though uh, something happened to the inverter and it's no longer working. Now, one of the major problems with some of these amazing uh, systems is that when one aspect of the system goes down, uh, you've got a paperweight. At that point because i don't know about you i have no idea what i'm doing when i break that system open but here you do because you've put this together and now you know what your charger is over here you know what your power inverter is uh your solar charge controller uh, your batteries uh how you run a shunt off your batteries to here um, where how you need to do um, for instance any kind of uh, fuses and so on, um, how you cool it with the fan, how you, how you connect it uh, here with, with the, you know, and let it breathe so it'll, it'll go well. So at this point, you don't have a paperweight. When things go bad, you take it off and you put something else on. Uh, it's also interesting to note that um, almost every major uh, solar generator or power box all-in-ones come from China now and everything in here for the most part comes from China so if we have a problem with China in the future um, and we don't import or export uh, then when something goes wrong with your your power box uh, your all-in-ones that you bought and are so wonderful you're not going to get the kind of warranty service or anything else and you're pretty much stuck so it'd be good to have two or three of them just in case one or two go bad. But it'd be better to have a situation where you can replace and exchange and do things that will keep you running right then and there. And also, let's say your batteries go dead. OK, both batteries are now out. What do you do? Well, at this point, you pull in. Oh, well, it's a paper one, but you pull in a basic lead acid battery. Um, a lead acid deep cycle battery would be amazing. What about if you just could scavenge car batteries, 12 volt car batteries that you can use to continue charging your necessities? 
um, you would always be able to find a battery somewhere. And the thing is, if you've got two solar panels, you can keep a battery up and running. Uh, you want from 8 to 10 amps, and that's a perfect way to get 8 to 10 amps from 200 watt solar panels. You could keep that battery going and you wouldn't be discharging it at all. It would stay even during the middle of the day. And during the middle of the day, you would charge your essentials. And so no matter what would happen, your 12 volts come in handy. Now you're thinking, well, how about I put my 12 volts in series and make my 48 volt again or my 24 volt? Uh, you don't want to just grab uh, any battery with whatever condition um, and try to uh, put that into uh, series or even parallel. You want to run just that one battery. And, and to do that, um, you would need something like this. You know, this is a like a little cigarette lighter. They're very cheap. Uh, you can plug in, um, you know, this unit right here to this battery through this and run your wires straight to the positive and to the negative. Uh, you could run USB uh, from this as well, besides your 12-volt connection. You got yourself enough to run the essentials. Uh, and what this does is, in a grid-down situation, after six months, and maybe things work and don't work, uh, what you do is you have all these parts. You have all these, you know, from, from Anderson plugs to, um, you know, to other USB uh, things. You've got wiring. You, you've got a lot of stuff you can use. Fuses. You can you can take things off. I mean, from variable speed fans, you can create something from the fans that are here. And so you have something to scavenge from, and whatever's still working after longer periods of time. But you're typically always going to find a battery that you're not going to discharge because you're going to hook up your two solar panels, much like these. These are Renogy 100 watt solar panels. So here's your 200 watts. That really is all you need to be able to, on a single 12 volt battery, whether it's a deep cycle or a starter battery off a car, uh, you can basically charge everything you're going to need. My third reason for building a DIY power system would be the idea of being mobile. If you plan on being mobile in a grid down, uh, going someplace for any reason, chances are you're going to go in a 12 volt system, whether it's a trailer, an RV, uh, your truck, car, or whatever it is. 12 volts is just a great voltage to keep consistent when you're having to leave the home. So when you start thinking about what you really need, uh, what you really need is you need to keep it 12 volt DC only. You don't want to use a power inverter because anytime you go from uh, 12 volt to 120, there's losses there. Uh, this this uh, 2000 watt uh, inverter will pull one and a half amps when running. Now everything here uh, can be run off DC except for this here. Um, also what could be really cool uh, is a DC fridge. Um, DC fridge pulls about four amps. Um, uh, the kind I have, um, if you look at my, my truck video, uh, is a probably a $275 uh, fridge. It works great. It could be a freezer as well. Um, that could run forever with uh, 200 watts of solar panels uh, and a lead acid battery of about 90 amp hours. So what do you, you really need? And this is just my idea of what that is. Um, your cell phone, first of all, uh, your cell phone is huge. It does all kinds of things. If you have an up-to-date cell phone, uh, even if the grid is down, uh, you have a GPS that uh, you can locate uh, where you're going. It's not as accurate, uh, pinging off towers, uh, but it'll off the satellites. Uh, it'll it'll give you um, uh, a good a good starting point for for getting around. Also, it does a tons of other things. There's apps. You go look online. I'll tell you all the apps that you can have that can be running, um, whether in airplane mode or, again, with no service. So some things that you want to charge. 
Again, everything in my estimation needs to be DC so that you uh, can run a small battery to make it all happen. Um, I, I like a, a good tactical watch because what that does is it gives you the ability to uh, set points of, of walking back to places if you're not sure, maps and that kind of thing. Um, and again, your phone is perfect for that as well. Again, we've already talked about this, uh, this and a, um, a battery of almost any kind, 12 volt, is going to get you the ability to charge uh, these right here, uh, as long as you have your solar panels on as well at the time. So uh, we've got batteries. Uh, I like the batteries uh, that, that you can plug into USBs. Uh, here's just some ideas of some batteries, some O lights. There's some some other kind too. I like to have electronics here where you can dump files that you want, um, and uh, you can use right off your phone. Just some phone attachments. Over here, uh, again, a power bank is great. I like the kind like this one here. I really like because you just slip your phone in there and plug it in. Uh, I have different attachments, so I can plug it into most anything that I need and keep that going. And uh, the other thing is communications. It's so important. Okay, so I really like these Bofangs as a US UR82s. Um, you can get them online for $20. The, these are really great radios for a lot of different reasons. Uh, what's nice about these is uh, you can use uh, this to plug into the back of the dock and plug it right into, uh, again, whether it's this guy right here uh, to your lead acid battery or uh, whether you have a system that you belt. Um, also, for the extended battery, um, you know, for nine bucks, you can uh, get two of these. And this is just plugs into USB and plugs into extended battery. Now, these don't run 12 volts. Um, basically, this drops, uh, this drops down to about um, seven volts, like six or seven volts. But it, it does make the, the transition in here. And so, but you just need a 12 volt uh, socket to put those in. So now what's good about these as well, besides having at least two, so you can talk uh, with someone if you're going to do something. Uh, this, these you can, you can set up to work with any FRS uh, walkie talkies that you get out of Walmart, uh, any GMRS, uh, which is, you can get the radius for that. And people have those uh, land mobile, which a lot of businesses have. Uh, as well as ham radio. Uh, this is uh, basically 70 centimeter and two meter. Um, so you can also hit repeaters and in an emergency, uh, you can also transmit uh, with these. So, uh, you know, with this set up with the bigger, little bigger antenna here, get a little better range on repeaters around here. Also, it's good to have extra batteries. When I bought this, uh, this is what came with it. It came with the extended batteries and it came with... Um, the, the, the regular batteries as well, and, um, and then also with the regular antennas. So and if you want to have this in your car, there's an adapter you can get, um, and you can get a lot better range. Uh, take this adapter, put this magnetic piece on top of your uh, automobile, just right in the middle of the, the roof. It's a good ground plane to get you uh, connecting well as you're driving with other people or I uh, just need to transmit from there. So also what's really important to know is that if you press this little button right on the side, uh, what happens is that you get an FM station. So when I turn this on, uh, when I press here, okay, obviously I haven't tuned it into any FM station, but um, what happens is I can pick up news and uh, I can be uh, kept up to date. And, and this is with the antenna and the strength of this, this is a transmits at high at eight watts. Uh, that can happen. Also, um, the NOAA weather channel, which would be more than a weather channel, uh, if there was a grid down situation, it would be really key. So you could really keep well informed. You can also buy a, you know, a radio you can put out in the sun or you can wind up, but I like this option a lot better. Uh, it's so versatile and all you gotta do then is keep one of these charged up at any time. So when I say 
you need to build a 12 volt DIY system. This is what I'm kind of referring to. In other words, you need to have something uh, small at the end of the day to keep your very, very essentials working in DC power. And the best way to do that is to be able to scavenge uh, car batteries wherever you can and, and run a single battery. Um, so without having that single battery and without having a, a power inverter, the simple system is under $200 to build or to at least have on hand and have your thought process uh, work through it. So uh, if you add a battery, usually a lead acid deep cycle, which is ideal, is about $90 and a power inverter, uh, a small one like we showed you a minute ago is about 30. So on one side of things, you got a solar charge controller, uh, like a 30 amp is a perfect amperage for that and uh, going into two or three hundred watt solar panels. If you live in Arizona where I'm at, then you're looking at, uh, you know, two. So 200 watts total. Other places you may want to run three uh, just to be safe. And on the other side over here, uh, you have your DC out, kind of your cigarette lighter, kind of, uh, that's an old school term, but um, a DC out here and also have a USB insert. So between the two of those, uh, you can charge up uh, your battery, um, especially uh, during the day when you're pulling six, six to 10 amps, uh, which is ideal to charge this battery. And you can't offset the amps uh, during the day and charge your devices then because you'll be bringing in uh, six to 10 or 11 amps and only be charging at maybe six or seven amps. So at this point, even a, a 12 volt battery that's used to start your vehicle and not designed to discharge really in any way because it has an alternator to keep it up, uh, you can not damage the battery. So this might be your power system that you build right here. Something very simple, you know, got some clamps here uh, to go on a, uh, a deep cycle battery like this or uh, a car battery, uh, either one. I mean, this could be it. This is, this is what you build and then have some solar panels around. So in summary, in summary, uh, I think it, you need to build a 12-volt uh, uh, DIY um, power system uh, so that you gain the skill, first of all, gain the skill and knowledge you need uh, to be able to uh, improvise down the road with, with whatever you've got. Uh, also 12 volt, I really think 12 volt is the, the best option to have for running these essentials right here and running them well. I know there's a lot more that can be said about, about why running this kind of a system I think would be the best way to go. Um, and I know I've left probably a lot of things out and you might feel that there's a lot more you want to run uh, than just this. Um, but... Uh, just some thoughts that uh, could be helpful.